So, let us download this delay info forecast dot MDL model and let us see what kind of graphs we get when the actual sales rate is 100 plus step of 10 comma 10, 100 plus 15 to pulse of 10 comma 1 and what if sales is normally distributed around a constant mean. See these are typical scenarios happen, the first two cases are just to understand how the dynamics work, but in reality we expect that the demand keeps fluctuating around a constant mean right. So, we are assuming normal, so in that case let us see how to simulate that scenario also. Let me quickly show the forecasted demand is 100, the actual sales is 100 plus step of 10 comma 10, step of 10 comma 10 means at time 10 there is additional unit of 10. So, from 0 to 10, at 0 to time 10 the actual sales and the forecasted sales is exactly the same. So, we do not expect any dynamics to happen, so system will start at dynamic equilibrium. Smoothing constant is 0.2, so at every time period 20 percent of the difference is going to be added to the stock, so stock has to keep increasing right, so that is what you expect. So, if you simulate the system, the forecasted demand follows a simple exponential goal seeking process, because the system that you just saw is nothing but a goal seeking model, where instead of having a desired stock, we call it as a reported value or the actual sales. Uh, and as the goal changed, I am going to approach the new value of the goal and saturate at 110, correct. Here, note that the material is not conserved, that is, let me show forecasted and actual sales. If you plot them, the actual sales increased to 10, 110 and yield constant there, but here you can see the forecasted demand slowly approaching 110 and after some point it will be the same, but whatever happened in this transient period is lost, like meaning no material is conserved there, the information was used to adjust my forecasted demand, but beyond that I am not using that information again, so that is what we mean by flows are not conserved, maybe it will be more apparent when we do the second uh, option what was it, 100 plus 50 into, let me just copy this, yeah. so now I am just going to the actual sales rate and replacing with 100 plus 50 into pulse 10 comma 1. what has happened is at time 10, there is a pulse of 50 units, there is at only one period, there is abnormal, suddenly demand peaked additional 50 units. So, the actual sales, there is a red line, went from 100 to 150 for just one period and came back, but since we are reacting, the next period I added 20 percent of difference, so it went to 110 and the next period I saw it was still only 100, then I slowly started to revise it downwards until I hit my so, I never hit 150, I only go little way up and then I just slowly come back to the old goal. Okay. Again, this is just uh, you know simulation right, so it does not know what is going to happen, it cannot estimate until it actually sees the value. Now, let us go to the third one, in third case we want to do something called random normal. Before we do that, so whenever new things come, I expect you to. I am just showing it because you will also learn how to do. Uh, now, there are various functions like the one if you want to simulate random distribution or Poisson triangle, various distributions can also be given here. So, in demand. Typically, we model as normal distribution or exponential distribution or various distribution. Some of it it can handle. So, let us see. Do I get a random normal is what we want. Random normal, though mathematically we just give two parameters, 
for simulation purpose it looks like it wants 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different parameters. By default it gives normal distribution mean 0 and variance 1. H is the mean, R is the standard deviation in this third and fourth parameter mean and standard deviation. What is M? M looks like the number of samples. Let me go to random normal cells. M is the minimum value it will return ok, x is the maximum ok. So, m and x gives the minimum and maximum for a truncated normal distribution what it gives. So, you cannot give it minus infinity plus infinity, if you really want it then you give a really large number positive and really large number negative. So, minimum value, maximum value, mean, standard deviation and s I think stands for the seed number. So, that uh, when you run it multiple times you generate the same random number that is enough for now. So, let us go back, so, minimum is 0, maximum 500 we have kept, mean is 100, standard deviation is 25 we have been given, they just put a stream as default value as 1. So, let us simulate, only let us plot the sales, we will get a curve like this, it is randomly distributing, the mean is approximately 100 as per this which is what we expect, right, mean is approximately 100 because of standard deviation that is the noise we are going to get a, a fluctuating values of sales it looks more realistic. Now, let us do forecast and this together. The green line in the middle is the forecast, so as you can see it is doing exponential smoothing. So, it is not going to go to the extremes because it is only 0 0.2 uh, you get a the green line like this it does not react so much to the demand pattern. If you change alpha value to something larger, let us see that, let us see what happens when we change the demand value or smoothing constant to something larger instead of 0.2 let us consider uh, 0 0.8, okay. Simulate over right now, current 0 0.8. Uh, yeah, you can see three lines. The red line, this one, uh, yeah, where are the mouses? The red line is the actual demand. There is a, I do not choose the color, so the orange line seems like this is 0 0.2, and the blue line is with 0 0.8. 0 0.8 more faithfully follows the same pattern because you are going to weightage of 80 percent. So, it is going to follow the same pattern. If you do not want it to react so much to the deviations, then we try to hover around the mean. So, let us go back to the slides. Now, let us take up another example. Availability of job openings influence people to migrate to a city and as people migrate to a city, they fill the available job openings. The simplistic SFD is shown here. People uh, then job, job openings, migration, adjustment time. Do you think that rep this represents the description given? The first question. The availability of job openings influence people to migrate to city. As people migrate in city, they fill the available job openings. As migration happen, people come in, then we have set up jobs. Right. As per this model, what should be units for people as per whatever is given in stock flow diagram? People unit could be person, job units could be job. So, now what will be units of job openings? Oh, I am just taking the difference, the structure is exactly the same. So, I have to different difference between as per this is jobs minus people. So, there it will get a 
dimension mismatch and job opening even if is converted into jobs then migration as per this it should be person per time correct so migration should be person per time if a job opening somewhere i am uh, just using the jobs so i need to actually have a another variable called as jobs per person or something like that a person per jobs either way so whenever there is a model you see we'll do three things we open the model check the model settings check the start time check finish time text time step very easy then you check the value of constants and equations and then check whether it is dimensionally consistent so i'm going to show all the three steps what is the name of the file again job space okay Let's go to model settings. We'll find the initial time is zero, the final time fifty, time step is point two five, units for time is month. Fine. People about eight hundred people are there initially. Units is persons. Then job, a thousand people are thousand jobs are there. But then when I came to job openings, I just put the unit as job, so jobs minus people. And then when they went to migration, I just did it as job openings divided by adjustment time. Very simple model. You can, uh, and the way the structure is exactly same as the previous two examples. One we drew on the paper, or one we just saw. It's exactly same format. But to check the units, if we do model units check, it will say there are two unit errors discovered. the first one is error in units for following job openings equation other is error in units for following migration equation the job openings had job minus people uh, that means job unit and person unit are taken difference and final unit you said as jobs it says it doesn't match that is one so oh, another thing while we share i think i should just okay so in your uh, can you say now when some model there is some button here called as document all so if you click that button it will give the entire model along with the settings in equations form it shows a variable adjustment time to what are the units what is the final time what is the initial time what are the time units then the equations job openings jobs migration people in this how can you figure out which is the stock from this let's be able to see it which around has integ function is the stock and whatever is integrating it over it must be the flow all right so that's how you find it okay now let's uh, so this is a model we have let's see what we have to do to change it and then i will show how to change it so Now we have to make the model dimensional consistent. Let us introduce a variable called as persons to job ratio. Unit is persons by job. Let us introduce a new variable and connect it to person, uh, connect it to job openings and connect it to migration. So that now I can make it dimensionally consistent. So I am going to introduce a person to jobs ratio, or people to jobs. Let's just. Uh, people to job ratio let me connect it to migration as well as this is a two equation which requires changing so i'm just connecting it to them as soon as you click ffx all three is going to go black person to job ratio let's call it person by job let's just say one person equal to one job for simplicity sake how will i change the job openings equation 
I need to convert it into units of jobs. So, I will say job minus people divided by people to job ratio, right. And here I can check syntax. Oh, uh, we went to the next equation. Okay, let me just close it. Oh, fine. And then I go to the next equation migration. So, in migration I just need to multiply jobs to people ratio because job openings are in jobs. So, when I multiply it, it will come back into people. Okay. So, let us do model units check, all units are okay. So, I just made a dimensionally consistent. Again, when I get a one example, I try to give in couple of other ideas so that both the jobs are done. Uh, so, now if I simulate it. Okay, what was the initial values? The people initial value was 800 and job value was 1000. Since people to job ratio is 1, it is kind of equivalent. So, I just simulated it. So, let me uh, select people and jobs and make a let us show a different graphs. So, people and jobs, jobs remain constant at sorry, jobs remain constant at 1000, uh, people migrate and go from 800 to 1000. Okay. So, this is a very simple model uh, of a basic delay. Now, let us make that example little more interesting. Any questions on this far? All I just made were dimensional consistent, but other than that the structure does not did not change from the previous demand example. Uh, demand example looks like a very constructed and structured example seen other exam other courses also, but this one looks like we are talking about migration other stuff, but finally the basic structure is very similar. 